It's a beautiful day in Alberta. Today, we're in the dinosaur capital of the world. Drum, Drum Heller. Heller. We're Tom and Angel, and we do all things dinosaur and more in Drum Heller. Join us as we hike the desert, find fossils, tour this dino-loving town, and end up in a T-Rex's mouth as we explore one of Canada's most unique terrains, the Alberta Badlands. We made it to the hoodoos, and I'll be perfectly honest, they look bigger in the pictures. <laughs> Our first stop today is an iconic must-see in the area. It's called the hoodoos, and wouldn't you guess it, it's full of hoodoos. Hoodoos are these spire-looking rocks that are actually caused by tens of thousands of years of erosion of water passing around them. This stop isn't very big, but it's really fun because it's one of the few places like this that you actually get to go in and almost interact with it. There are some that are off limits, but we climbed up here on what will one day be hoodoos. Do you know what a tipple is? Aside from being a funny word, that is a tipple. Not only that, it happens to be Canada's last wooden tipple. We're at Atlas Coal Mine, now a national historic site. It is one coal mine of previously 139 that were here in the Drumheller Valley. In a place called the Badlands, it's hard to think of what kind of economic activity could happen here, especially when you look at how inhospitable the terrain is. Well, it turns out all of these hills are full of wildfire coal. Safe to say that the coal mining industry exploded in the valley pun intended. The Atlas Coal Mine, established in 1935, was one of the first and most successful of all the mines. Can you believe that this wasn't originally here? It was originally built across the river, and once that coal mine ran out, they disassembled it and brought it across the river and rebuilt it here, where it still stands today. And today, this tipple stands as a symbol and reminder of how the coal mining industry in Drumheller Valley was leading the way for Canadian coal. And also ultimately led to the industrial development of Western Canada because everything ran on coal. And it's because of mines like this that we discovered fossils in the first place. So although Drumheller is known as the dinosaur capital of Canada, we can thank the coal miners for finding those fossils in the first place. If you come during the day, you can go in, climb up the tipple, climb down into the mine, and really immerse yourself in the coal mining experience. So we're having to cross over the river 11 times, and so there are 11 bridges. And they're all aptly named the 11 Bridges of Wayne. We've made it to the end too, the hamlet of Wayne. Once having a population of 2,400 people, now hosts 27 people. That's it. This building behind me was built in 1913 and it is the last remains of the town of Wayne. It's called the Last Chance Saloon and it's still operating. It is known for being the last functional building from the coal boom of the early 1900s. Today it is a barbecue restaurant and a hotel and it's an iconic stop along Highway 10X here in Alberta. I've been waiting for this all day. They are known for their barbecue. It's all in-house. I'm so excited. This looks delicious. I got the pork shoulder sandwich. I don't know, it's pork shoulder. I'm pretty excited, look at this. So good. Ooh, and it's got pickles. I got the brisket wrap. It's in a tortilla. It's got brisket tomato, greens. Pretty well seasoned. Not too sweet, not too salty. Really good. Highly recommend getting the barbecue. Something really fun that they do in Drumheller is they've got dinosaur sculptures and statues scattered all over the city. In fact, they're home to the world's largest dinosaur and we found it. 
not that one. We've made it to the top. This is Tyra's mouth. <laughs> Fun facts about the world's largest dinosaur. It is 86 feet or 25 meters tall and 151 feet long from head to tail. And like most carnivorous dinosaurs, you can end up inside of it. This one has 106 stairs that conveniently get you to the top. Still, you can say you're inside the mouth of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyra the dinosaur is 4.5 times bigger than an actual T-Rex, so it's really, really big. And she costs $1,065,000 to build. It's a girl dinosaur. We took a quick drive north up to Orkney Viewpoint. You drive up from river level all the way to the top of the canyon walls. So now we have this incredible view of Horse Thief Canyon and the Red Deer River. Driving around Drumheller, you cannot help but notice all of the statues of dinosaurs on every street corner around town. Some are as old as 50 years old, but a majority of these statues came from a park called Prehistoric Park that closed down in the 90s. They distributed all of these statues across town. And today, the Drumheller Dino Arts Association is a nonprofit that maintains these 30 plus statues all over town. You can look online and see a full map of where all these statues are, and you can even go on a dino walk to find find them all. We tried to find some, but there's far too many. Have fun taking pictures and finding them yourself. Our first activity at the museum is actually an expedition. We're going on something called a dino site where we get taken on a tour to walk into the Badlands and learn how to identify fossils from regular rock and hopefully find some fossils ourselves. <laughs> I think it's geared towards children, but I think we all know Tom and I are just giant kids. What did you find? Um, a chunk of a rib. Wow, first one. Guys, we're surrounded by children, but this is so much fun. Like, look at all this stuff. Like, that's a bone. This is bone. This is like a million year old seed. There's like wood. This is so ridiculous, but it's so much fun. So the thing with some of these fossils is that they can be really small. So you have to like sift through all these smaller guys in order to find it. So you might have noticed that we are not digging. We don't have any shovels or rakes or anything. And that is because it's actually illegal to dig for fossils in Alberta. But thankfully in the Badlands, water erosion is doing all the digging work for us. So as we are walking through these areas where you can clearly see that water has streamed down and there are these piles of rocks, there's a good chance that those rocks are actually fossils that have been dug out from those hills. So that's what we're doing today. We're learning how to look for the fossils and identify what's a fossil versus what is iron rock, what is sandstone, that kind of thing. 
That is petrified wood, and that is dinosaur bone for sure. Yeah, it looks a lot like that one there, yeah. in fact. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. <laughs> it might seem like these mounds are hills going upward, but in fact, we're going down into the ditches and the pathways that glaciers and melted snow and ice and water have created. So instead of having to dig down, we're just walking underground already. Big bone, baby. Fossils. <laughs> One thing in Drumheller that is an absolute must is the Royal Tyrell Museum. It's situated in Midland Provincial Park, which is just outside of Drumheller itself. And it's named after Joseph Bert Tyrell, the geologist who discovered the first known carnivorous dinosaur in Canada, the Albertosaurus. Given how hot it is outside, I definitely recommend doing the outdoor section first and then coming inside because inside there's 13 billion years of history to check out. This is really cool because it's air conditioned. The museum is laid out in a really cool way where you're taking a journey through time, starting from 14 billion years ago when the universe began all the way to 2.6 million years ago, which is the beginning of the modern era. It takes a lot of work to take something that's extracted from the ground and process it to make it look pretty enough to put in a museum. And while it can take weeks, months, or years to do it, unfortunately today there are no paleontologists or technicians to see work, but we can see the cool equipment. Welcome to the Burgess Shale section, my least favorite section. It shows the earliest period, the Cambrian period, which is when we discovered the earliest forms of complex life. And I have to say, they're really creepy looking, and I'm kind of glad they don't exist anymore. Part of this exhibit is walking through a section where they are blown up in 3D up to 12 times their size, and I hate it. I hate all of it. They're so gross. But I'm sure in 500 million years, someone's gonna look at humans and think, we're gross. <laughs> Sarah. That's a dated reference. We've all heard of Jurassic Park, but have you heard of Cretaceous Garden? A little bit unexpected, but look, we have this beautiful indoor, I wanted to say botanical garden, but it's a garden and it's supposed to feature some of the recognizable Cretaceous period plant life. This garden features plants from the Cretaceous period, like this Dawn Redwood. It dates back 2.5 million years. I knew that crocodiles and rhinoceroses and birds are like related to dinosaurs. I had no idea that we still had plants from that area. I don't know what I thought happened to them, but never thought that I was walking through forests with dinosaur aged plants. I also don't know why I didn't really think about small dinosaurs. Like, there's gigantic ones, but then look at this thing. It's so little compared to all the other ones here. This thing is gigantic. If I say it's a Leoplardon, Charlie, will any of you get that? I am in no way a huge dinosaur nerd, but this place is cool. Very, very cool. Super cool. We don't claim to be experts in anything really, but we love going to museums and exhibitions just to learn about random things that we knew nothing about before. Yeah. Even if you're not a kid that grew up loving dinosaurs, I think you'll still have fun here. Our next stop is Horse Thief Canyon, a stretch of the Badlands that is just north of Drumheller and east of the Red Deer River. Although it's not 100% clear where it got its name, it's either that there was an underground horse smuggling business between Canada and the United States that passed through here, or it was the stories of horses that would go into this canyon and come out with a completely different branding. Any of these stories could have been true, but no one knows for sure. Either way, this is Horse Thief Canyon.
The interesting thing about this canyon is that there aren't any proper trails. I think maybe there's one to the edge of this cliff here, but as I'm looking down, I can see some path paved from people walking into the Badlands. So you can walk through the canyon, but there aren't any like specific hiking trails for you to go down. So you just have to be careful where you go. Quick pit stop. It's just off the side of the road. It is the littlest church. If you're interested in it, you can make a quick stop. Tom really wasn't, so he's out looking for fossils, but let's go check it out. Sorry, it's not the littlest church, it's just the little church, which means that there's a littler church somewhere else somewhere, but this little church seats 10,000 people, six people at a time. This is a proper real church built back in 1968 and it was reconstructed here in 1991 and it's a real church and a real place of worship. Did you find any fossils? I found a piece of petrified wood. What was it scared of? Just outside of Drumheller, still in the Badlands area, you can find another little gem called Horseshoe Canyon. And what's really cool about it is that you actually get to hike down into the canyon on safe and well-defined trails so you don't get lost and die. It is so hot out here. It is, may as well call it spicy. This place is really, really cool. Hey Tommy, what are these cool ridges called? They're called rills. Like rills with a ridge. Oh, for rills? For rills. No joke, eh? It's like really easy to find petrified wood and other very common fossils in Alberta. So cool that I know how to do this now. Well, is it really cool? Cool to me. <laughs> well, friends, that's it for our adventures in Drumheller in the Alberta Badlands. If you liked it as much as we did, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Do you know what a tipple is? <laughs> and ultimately led to the industrial... Whoa. Oh. What? No. Did I look bad? <sighs> you didn't get that. Oh my gosh. The Albertosaurus. Named after Fat Albert. <laughs> bring a hat. Bring everything. Bring your mom. Be prepared. <laughs>